All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to another uh, hallway hangout. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Nick Diego, and with me is Justin Tadlock. We're both developer advocates, uh, WordPress developer advocates uh, sponsored by Automatic. So um, today we're gonna be, we kind of have a lot to talk about. Um, hopefully we get through all of it, but if we don't, that will just be some good content for the next hallway hangout. But what we wanna talk about today is building websites for clients and some of the challenges or things that you need to overcome when you're doing that. Um, so there's a couple new features in WordPress for curating the editor experience, allowing you to kind of customize how the editor works, um, which might be needed for clients. And then that's kind of topic one, curation and some demos of some new functionality. And then topic two is gonna be talking about how to build um, or building block themes for clients and Justin has put together uh, a, a new boilerplate or sample theme, block theme, that you guys might find useful. But uh, again, starting with curation, um, if that conversation takes too much of our time, we'll just move uh, the block theming to the next Hangout. Um, we really want to engage with everybody's questions uh, and try to answer as much as we can. We have Alec on hand here, who is one of the people to help with the curation. So he can answer even some more of the technical questions uh, should those come up. Um, but yeah, that's what we're planning on doing today. And uh, we'll both be monitoring chat. Again, please ask all the questions you can. Um, I do have a little poll that I'm gonna run uh, just to kind of gauge the audience and where we're all coming from. And I'm gonna start that now. Feel free to answer or not, it's not, that big of a deal. So um, while that's running, what I wanted to do before we begin is just share a couple general uh, resource links for everybody. Right now, we are just starting the process for WordPress 6.3. So this is the next major WordPress release. Uh, it's set to come out in August. And there are just, so if you're if, if that's news to you, uh, I, um, there's a couple uh, links that I want to share for the roadmap because there's a lot of exciting things coming in 6.3. And it's, you know, in the last year, if you think back a year ago, there's functionality in the editor that we just didn't have, you know, things like margin and padding on most blocks, like where today we can't take that for granted, where a year ago we didn't even have that. So we've made huge progress in the last year. And 6.3 is an opportunity to kind of add some more polish to the interface, improve various things, and set the stage for phase three um, of the Gutenberg project, which is the collaboration phase. So I'm gonna share another link. So if you're not terribly familiar with what the phases are of Gutenberg or what phase three includes, this is kind of a nice overview of what the next phase for phase three collaboration, which will, you know, it's starting to kick off now. Uh, and then 6.4, that will be a major focus. So, but uh, where I wanted to start today uh, was around curating the editor. So when you're building, we've heard this a lot from the community, especially from agencies and people building sites for clients. You have a lot of control in the editor or you have a lot of functionality in the editor to change colors and change styles. All that stuff's been added in the last year. But what if you don't want to give all that functionality to a client? You know, what if, you know, editors shouldn't have access to border controls? Maybe your designers want access to border controls, but the editors shouldn't. Um, this is what we talk about when we're talking about curation, a ways to limit or restrict or modify the functionality of the editor based on the needs of yourself and, you know, clients that you build for. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen because I'm going to cover some of the kind of just general uh, concepts around curation and some of the functionality that's been in WordPress for quite some time. And then I wanted to do a short demo around a new functionality that came out in 6.2 that really kind of unlocks the doors to, to, to even more of this curation uh, functionality. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen. And this is just a reminder, we should all be here, hallway. <laughs> this is the event that you were attending. Um, so there was a post published a while ago 
or not a post, a page in the block editor handbook called curating the editor experience. This is a really long post and it inclu includes all sorts of different ways that you can restrict the editor. Not every way, but most of the mo most of the most obvious ways of doing this. Um, so if you haven't checked out this page, let me drop the link in chat. This is a great resource for ways of curating the editor. However, up until 6.2, you were limited in terms of the way block settings worked. You know, for let me, let me back up. For example, if you wanted to control how a button block functions or how the settings that are available to a button block just globally, you can do that in theme.json, which I'll show you in a second. But if you wanted to say, when a button block is placed inside of a cover block, I want it to have a different set of settings. Maybe you have a style guide for how, you know, cover blocks are supposed to look and you wanna restrict buttons to only being black and white inside of a cover block. You couldn't do that before, but with 6.2 and some of this new functionality, you can. Um, so for those that want really complex controls, you know, something we've heard a lot from the higher ed, uh, folks in the higher ed industry, you know, you need to be able to lock down different things. You can now do some of that. So part of what we wanted to talk about, talk about today is show you how you can do those things and also solicit from you what other functionality do you need to, to meet the needs of your clients? Um, and so building off of this curating the editor experience article that has all sorts of stuff like locking APIs, um, the, the article that I actually just published yesterday, which is the main point of what I wanted to talk about today, is all about a new client side filter. So again, I'll drop this in the chat. So this is the new client side filters that allows you to do some advanced stuff. Before we get into that, what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at a very stock install of WordPress. This is just a local development environment. We're using a 2023 child theme. The only reason I'm using a child theme is so we're not messing with the, the base 2023 theme. And start to explore some of these curation techniques. Now, we're not gonna go into a super full demo. We could probably spend three hours on that. But it's just to kind of give you a taste of what's available and then hopefully get some ideas from you all about what would you like to see in the future. So in 2023, um, let's assume for a second that we want to restrict the, the units of measure that are available to the columns block. That seems a little bit abstract, but if we go over to our, let's see, uh, pages. Actually, I'll go to the front end here and we'll go to my sample page. Something happened here. Oh, I had Gutenberg enabled. Yeah, it's, it's probably the spacer block. If, yeah, there we go. Presets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, so I so in addition to the, the base theme, I am using Gutenberg just to take advantage of some of this new functionality all of which will be available in 6.3. So here we are, just a very simple page that I built out. I do have a big love of the book, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and that's where this is all built off of, but it's just dummy content. Coming over here to our design in our columns, we have a column block. Now, if we go over here to settings, the dimension settings, you can see here that you have the different dimension settings that are available. Right now, I've already applied this, what I'm gonna show you. But right now, I, I can't change this. It's locked at pixels. But in a default theme or in a default uh, environment, you can change the pixels to anything you want. So if you look over in our cover block here and we go over to the settings here, you can see that I have me zoom in. I can't really zoom in, but we have pixels, percentage, EM, RAM, VW, VH. But on my column, I only have pixels. I can't change this. How do we do this? Well, this we don't need our new client side filter for. We can just do this in straight theme.json. And again, this is covered in the curating the editor article here by limiting interface options with theme.json. So if we come over here to my child theme, this is the theme.json file for my 
child theme, 2023 child theme okay, in my theme.json file. In settings, and again, if this is if you're new to theme.json, I apologize. There's there's a ton of great articles uh, around theme.json, especially a lot of learn and a lot of uh, video tutorials in this. But the theme.json file is what is going to help define the settings that are available to the blocks in your WordPress editor. So in the settings section, down here under spacing, I have units set to be percentage, pixels, EM, RAM, so on and so forth. This is your global spacing setting. So here you can see I have all the options. Down here, I have the options for the column. If I remove the options to just pixels, and again, what I have here is I have blocks, I'm targeting just the column block, and I'm saying I only want the column block to have pixels, that's what I'm doing here. Now in the editor, every other block, unless it's defined here, will have all the spacing units. But the column block specifically will only have pixels. So this is a very simple way of applying curation, but it's global. This means every column block can only have pixels, not depending on where it's located or who's editing it it's everywhere. Really good in many circumstances, especially if you just want to default. If you don't need functionality, you just want to turn it off. Great way of doing that, but it's global. What we want to talk about with these client side filters, which I'll show you in a second, is we want to be able to control this in a contextual way, you know, based on user permissions, based on location, um, based on the, yeah, those two are the main ones. And you can do like on posts or pages. So this, what I'm showing you here, is just block level specific theme.json settings, a very simple way of curation. But let's take another, let's take a deeper look at doing this with the client side filter. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull every example that I show you today is going to come from that article. So if I'm going too fast or you want to take a look at this and try it yourself, you can come on over here to the WordPress developer blog, take a peek at the curating the editor experience article, and we will everything will be covered here. So we talked about here, this is the example that I just showed you with changing the pixel value for uh, a block. But what we're going to do now is we're going to do it using the client side filter. Again, you can do this in theme by JSON, but we're going to do it using the client side filter. Now, to speed this up, what I've done is I've created a plugin. And the plugin is here. It's called Block Curation Examples. This is a plugin that I wrote. It's basically just a little bit of a wrapper plugin to show you how these work. Uh, sorry, not to show you how these work, to, to implement them, implement the uh, the filters. So that's the that's the plugin. You can download it, play with it, mess with it, fork it, break it. Um, but that's uh, that's what that's what I'm using here to apply the filters. And when you apply these client side filters, it's well. There are many ways to do it, but I like using a plugin. So you can create your own, like a curation plugin, or in some industries, curation is called governance. Um, so it could be a governance plugin that does all this functionality, but in my case, uh, we have a simple curation example. So now with this curation plugin enabled, come over here, and this is my this is my simple plugin. Inside of my plugin, I have a source folder, and then I have uh, a file for use settings before. That is the name of the client side filter that we're going to be using. So here's my example for pixel value. And the way this filter works is it's you need to use add filter. Again, I'm going to be breezing through this because it's more laid out in more detail in the article. I just want to kind of show you what the end result is to kind of uh, generate some discussion around how you could use this in the future. Are there functionality that's missing? That sort of thing. But you're going to use add filter. We're going to use our filter here, which is the block editor use setting before filter. We're going to we're going to use a namespace. So filters in JavaScript require namespaces. So we're going to add a namespace, and then we're going to have our callback function. And our callback function accepts a bunch of things: a setting value, a name, a client ID, and a block name. What's basically happening is when you apply this filter, the editor is basically looking at each setting value for a block, and it's going through this filter. And it's getting, you're basically filtering the setting value. So in this case, what we want to do 
we're going to replicate what we did in theme.json is whenever we're looking at a block that's a column. So we are block name. This is one of the parameters. Block name equals column. And the setting name is spacing units. We want to return this array of just pixels. Now, I would not write a filter for this. I would just use theme.json, but this is a, like a one-to-one -one comparison of how you would do both. And the same thing in both situations. So what we've done here is we filtered that setting value to just pixels. So now columns just have the pixel for their spacing units. But now that we have this filter and we're in the editor, we can do so much more to determine what the pixel value should, when the pixel value should be applied. You know, in here, we could figure out the role or the permissions of the current user and then say, well, only apply pixels when it's a, 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 um, like an editor where a designer should have access to everything. Um, maybe we wanna say it should only be available to when a column is inside of a cover block or on a post or on a page. Because we have this filter now, it gives you so much more flexibility to apply these settings. So now one really important thing before I continue is that blocks generally have a lot more quote unquote settings than is available in theme.json. So if we come over to our example here, um, when we look at a column, for example, <clears throat> this column block is gonna have attributes. It's gonna have, you know, um, setting widths, right? This is not available in theme.json. This filter that I'm showing you today can only be applied to settings that can be set in theme.json. So that's a limitation currently. Um, so you can't predefine width, you can't remove width, you can't do any of that. But whatever can be defined in theme.json, you can filter with this filter. Um, so just be aware, the article covers that, but be aware that this is a current limitation of this filter, but maybe we'll have additional functionality in the future that gives you more options. Let's look at a more advanced example. I'm gonna come back to my article here just so we can take a peek. The next example that we're gonna look at is restricting by block attributes. And I'm not gonna get through all of our examples today because we still wanna talk about block themes if we can or answer questions. But this one I think is really cool and it kind of starts to hint at the power of this filter. So because we are, we now have, because we're using a filter, we have access to everything in the editor. And we also have access to the block that we've selected. Imagine a scenario where you're, you have a heading and you want H1s and H2s to have certain typography settings, but you want to disable or limit typography settings for page three, four, five, and six. I don't know. It's a contrived example, but perhaps that is needed by a client for some reason. Well, you can do that. So let's take a look at our next example here. In our next example, what we want to do is we want to remove all typography settings from H3 through H6 and only give it three font sizes. So if we look here, what are we doing? We have our filter again, same setup. We're gonna say, if the block is a heading, then apply our filtering. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna grab the heading level from the block that we've selected. We have a client ID, and this is the client ID for the block that we've selected. And we're passing it to get the attributes of that block. Now, we know that the heading level is stored as an attribute on that block. So we can get that. So here what we're doing is all we're doing is we're getting the current heading level of that block. And then we're saying, these are the settings that we wanna modify. So if the heading value is H3 through H6, we wanna turn off custom font sizes. We wanna turn off font style, font weight, everything like that. And we wanna limit the font size to just three. Now this is another important point. When you apply custom font sizes or custom colors using this filter, these already have to be set in theme.json. Um, the, this filter will not create new uh, CSS variables. Um, you know, that's what theme.json does. Whenever you create a font size, it creates a new variable for that. 
Um, same thing with color. So the filter will not create new ones. If you define a new font sizes, it won't handle that for you. So basically theme.json is like your master, your, your source of truth for all the available settings. The filter is just filtering it, turning things on and off or lit restricting what's available. Then down here, we're saying if the heading level is greater than three or three or greater, apply these modified settings. And we can see that in action over here. So I have an H2 and we have all the typography settings here. If I change this to an H3, this is a, a little bit of a, not a bug, but it's just, it's something that needs to be worked out. But uh, so if I change it to an H3, you can see that just the three are available. The re what happened before is my H2 was customized like this. So when this turned everything off, I have the size custom, but I couldn't see what was there. So that's a, that's a, that's a bug, unfortunately, that showed up in this. But, but what happened was, is with H3s, I don't have the typography settings that I normally do. I just have font size. So very easy. All we did was we managed this using that filter. And you can do this with any, with any attribute. So your mind can kind of run wild with what's possible once you have access to these attributes in these filters. Now, the final one that I wanna talk about today, which is really interesting, is around context. So here we have a cover block and I have a button. And this is what I alluded to earlier, where we want this button to only be black or white. Down here, outside of cover blocks, we don't care what they are. In my colors, I can choose anything. But up here inside of a cover block, I only want this to be black or white and see how it's only black or white. This is what we talk about with like context. Uh, and this allows you to do some really powerful things and really you know, stick to brand guidelines and depending on where blocks are located. So I'm gonna skip my next, my next example just for the sake of time. And now we're gonna jump to this modify block settings based on location example. So here what we're doing is we're checking if the block is a button then we're using uh, two functions or two selectors to get whether the block has parents. And again, because we're in the editor, we can do all this fun stuff. So we're figuring out if the block has parents and we're getting those parents. So parents are, you know, if it's uh, the buttons inside of a, a cover, that's a parent. And then we're determining if one of those parents is a cover block. Again, this might look a little complicated, but that's all we're doing here. We're just determining if a, one of the parents in this array or object is a cover. This is our list of modified settings. We wanna limit the color styling or the colors that are available to just base and contrast, which in this case in 2023 are white and black. And then we're saying if it's cover, if it's in a cover block, modify the settings. And as simple as that, that's what you're seeing here. This filter has been applied using that plugin. So we just have these two colors. And then down here, because this is not in a cover block, we have all the colors that are available. So that is uh, a very, very quick uh, overview or demo of this new filter, but it shows you how it starts, you start to think about how you can apply this in different cases. So let me, let me stop there and I'll kind of open the floor for questions. Um, I Forgive me, I know that was very quick, um, but yeah, let me know what you think. All right. Now, Larry's got a question in the uh, chat there. Uh, is there an easy, quick overall method to give the customer only access to text or wording for their website? Uh, that is all of my customers wants to be able to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just um, one, I'll be a minor <clears throat> way of curation. But yeah. there are other ways of curating too. When I think this is, was this introduced in 6.2, the content only editing? I think it, was, it may have been before that. Uh, I don't know. I've been on a uh, like trunk and Gutenberg so long, I forget the versions. Um, uh, do you have an, I don't know if I have an example of that offhand, but there should be in the, uh, is there one in the curating the editor experience article? Yeah, I'm looking at it right here. So, um, yeah. 
Uh, okay. So what what this um, the way this works is with uh, page templates, and so what you can do is you can create a page template where you lock down everything on the page to be content only editing. Now, let me see if I can open this up and see what this does. Oh, that's a full on example. Well, let me, let me, let me, um, all right, I'm going to copy this and see if this works. Copy this code and we'll see if we can see this in action. So the way that you, what happens is, is when you apply this content only editing, let's see here. Okay, so let me come up here. So when I click on this cover block, see how it's all these settings on the side, you know, they can change color, do all sorts of stuff. When I click on this group here, notice how this side really starts to simplify. So there's no set, there's no settings, there's no colors, there's no nothing. All I can do is change the text and see how the, the toolbar got really simple. So if we compare this toolbar here to say this toolbar where it has, you know, all sorts of stuff, movement and links and all sorts of things. Down here, it's much more simplified. You just get both the tile size and link and you can't move the block around. Um, so this basically you're combining locking with template only editing, which is content locking in many ways. And this allows the user to maybe change the image uh, so they can replace the image, but they can't remove the image block. They can't delete the paragraph block. They can't move things around. They're just editing the content. So yeah, this is currently possible. Uh, and I would, you can dive into it. Uh, sorry, I'm dive into it in the, uh, in that article. Yeah, I think it's probably worth noting too that there's no UI for locking the content or like no. that. Uh, you have to manually enter the attribute to the block. Exactly. And here's uh, oops. Here's the I think there's not copy and paste here. My chat is not letting me. Paste. There we go. So this is the link to the more technical reference for locking and template locking um, that you can dig into. But this is how you do it. So there is no user interface. But as a builder for of sites for clients, you could set it up this way. And you can also do this with patterns, which we just saw. That was just a pattern. So you could create patterns for your client um, that was available to them. And they, you know, maybe it's a call out or I don't know, a piece of piece of content. And when they insert that into the page, they could just only change, you know, the content that's in it. They couldn't really mess with the the, the pattern itself. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in the chat, we also uh, we have a question from Anton. Uh, I think this one looks pretty good. Is there an easy way to check if the context is within a template part? Often want to severely limit options within the header or footer um, template parts. Um, that's probably going back to like the presentation somewhat. Um, yeah. Or going back to what you were presenting earlier with the block settings filter. I'm, I'm guessing that's what he's asking about. Um. I don't know. I don't know if Alec can answer this. I, you, you might be able to. I mean, uh, template part is, I mean, it would be like a parent block, right? I don't know. Uh, yes, I, I'd have to poke around to figure that out. Uh, the the message I put in was something that we've been doing. Sometimes like data isn't available in Gutenberg uh, or through JS methods, and so a lot of time we can if we can figure it out with PHP, like what page you're on or something like that, just inject that into the page with a localize or a uh, inline script, and then you can use it in your custom JS. If if you don't have access to it through normal methods in JavaScript, you can always just yeah shoehorn it in with PHP. I'm not sure if this would apply to like a specific template part though. Um, so I have to experiment with that. Yeah. I mean, you can do, this is an example I didn't show, um, but you can do, you know, you can easily like fetch by post type. Uh, again, that's not addressing the template part thing, um, but there's gotta be a way. 
Uh, and maybe I'll need to look into that because I could imagine a scenario when you're in the editor here and a person changes the template that they're using. Um, that would be really cool. So if you like change to a different page template, certain functionality was available. Um, I don't know, that, that would be an interesting application of that. I'm sure there's a way to figure it out. Yeah, well, that's another example where you can add to the uh, to your examples repo. Exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, speaking of that, so the, um, the repo that I shared, this, uh, let's see here, this, ex this plugin, this is just kind of like the beginning. So over time, I'm gonna just, as more examples come, we'll just add more examples here. So, uh, and I know that, you know, there's some other work going on in terms of creating curation or governance examples. So, oops. So this will continue being built out. Uh, with more, with more things on how to do this sort of stuff. Does anybody, you know, we have some more questions, but does anybody have issues that they're running into, like right now, like with a client project, or you know, clients are asking for around kind of curating, like limiting functionality, um, restricting functionality, that sort of thing, that they just either they they just can't do with the editor or it's preventing them from uh, transitioning to blocks. We're really interested to hear that um, because as we move into phase three, uh, we really wanna tackle as many of these things as possible if we can um, to make sure this functionality is available. Yeah, there was a, one other in the uh, chat asking if we can implement this per role. Um, yeah, you can. Actually, yeah, as an example, in the curating the editor experience with clients have filters posts. Um, though I wouldn't, uh, I would prefer to use, uh, I think you use uh, capabilities instead of an actual role, right? Or did you use a role? It, no, I'm using capabilities. So it's the yeah. one example that I skipped for time. But yeah, right. you can absolutely do that. You can do can user and then you can pass in uh, permissions uh, that the user, you know, that kind of map to. Uh, roles like administrator, editor, so on and so forth. So you can, this is really handy too, because if you define your own custom roles with, you know, certain permissions, uh, you can use that here. So you're not, you're, you're filtering by permission as opposed to actual role title, um, which is arguably the more correct way to do it. But yeah, you can easily pull that. And then in this example, I was uh, limiting who can control borders. So if you're an administrator, you can control border. Uh, but if you're an editor, you don't have access to that. So this is a great way, of, like if you have like a custom role for like a designer or like a web you know, designer, give them everything. But then other users like your content creators, you would just limit everything or limit a whole bunch of stuff that they just couldn't touch. Um, and you can also do this by post type. So for example, maybe you want to give pages everything, but then in posts, you only want restricted functionality for administrators or something like that, all possible with this filter. I do, I do want to add something uh, just based on the, the question. Uh, when implementing uh, something by role, that's really never the right way to look at it. It's always capability because um, yeah. uh, the capabilities that a role has can change. Um, and you may be opening up a security issue if you're checking for a specific role and that role uh, for some reason on a site doesn't have uh, that capability. Um, yeah. Capabilities are like the source of truth where the yeah. roles can be anything. Uh, let's see here. Real client issue. Exposing different template parts. I'm gonna read it aloud just so oh, go for, it. for the benefit of people who are watching this later. Uh, real client issue. I want to expose some template parts to clients, but not all. For example, social icons template part, a sidebar, sidebar template part or footer content template part, but not other template parts like header, footer and meta. Okay, that was a lot of template parts in that question. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, this is this is a tough one, right? Because the the template parts for the most part are really only available through the site editor. 
whichever if you have access to the site editor you have access to everything um that's going to be an interesting thing though because as the site editor continues to improve uh there's you know because we're moving towards kind of a unification of things so you'll be able to actually edit the pages of your content uh in the site editor um i can foresee a world where there's greater access given to the site this is not planned or anything i'm just thinking of a, you know once we have this unification different types of user roles will have access to that um that's a really interesting thing to think about uh condition basically temple parts by by capability um I don't have a good answer on that either. Um, yeah. I see. All right. So there is a question. Oh. Are they, they can, or go ahead. Did you have a response to that? No, 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 go for it. I'll, I'll follow up after you. Oh, okay. I was just going to move on to the next question. Um, so, uh, Elisa, uh, asked or Eliza asks, are they are they considering locking the site editor to user roles? Um, it's already locked to probably like edit theme options or is there a different capability. I can't remember. Um, it's based on cap uh, whatever uh, the capability is. Um, and on a clean install, it's just administrators like with no custom roles or anything, and yeah. super admins if you're multi-site. So. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, uh, there are plenty of role management plugins out there. Uh, if you want to open it up to, you know, different roles, so you can add uh, whatever the capability is for it too. Mark's next question uh, is is an interesting one. Um, you know, with regards to like replacing his widgetized sections with temple parts. Um, somewhat related to this is a lot of work that's being done around the pattern block. Um, so I'm sure most of folks are familiar with the reusable blocks, um, which are kind of like temple parts, right? You, you can put them anywhere on your site and the, the content is synced. So if you edit you know, a reusable block over here and the same reusable blocks over here, the content will update and be the same. Um, there's work being done on partially synced pattern blocks. Basically, you can have, let's imagine you have an image and a paragraph, and that's your pattern. You can insert that pattern in different places. Right now, when you insert a pattern, it just it's just blocks. There's no, it, they're just blocks. Once you insert it into the editor, that's it. Um, but theoretically, in the future, what would happen is when you insert a, a partially synced pattern, the content will be different in each instance, but the blocks will be the same. So you'd have, you still have a head at, uh, image in a, in a paragraph um, in both instances, but the, the, the text would be the same. But if you wanted to change that pattern and maybe put the text above the pair, uh, sorry, the paragraph above the image, that would... <laughs> I don't know if I'm explaining that. That would sync between the instances. So the content would be different, but the layout and the function, the layout of the pattern would remain synced. Um, so that provides some interesting, let me see if I can find um, the PR for that. But that provides some interesting functionality in the future because people have been asking that forever. You insert a pattern and then I want to update my pattern. Well, if it's already, the content's already on the page, there's no way to do that. Um, but hopefully in the future that will be possible. Yeah, that's the number one question I get is about synced patterns. Um, yeah, there's yeah, no way to do that. Okay, here's here's the PR for those that are interested, or one of the PRs. I know there's multiple. Yeah, I knew uh, one of the uh, other questions around access to everything versus just pieces of the design. Um, I think uh, navigation comes up in that a bit. Um, 
sometimes you have like editors who can you know manage uh, navigation menus but you don't want them access uh, giving them access to like the rest of the site um i don't uh, know I, that was also hard in classic uh before blocks uh i think at one point it was anyway uh, just because based on how they done uh corded permissions around that let's see so i uh, uh I don't know, I'm trying to think if there are like solutions with, yeah, around patterns uh, for that too. Or like, I don't know, I, I, I would probably build uh, maybe a classic menu. I'm, I'm just trying to like rambling right now. I'm trying to think of a ways around that. Well, one of the things I would I do want to stress is that, especially like when it comes to like navigation, because one of the things that comes up so much is like, how do I build a mega menu? You know, like, like really like more complicated stuff. In those situations, I, I would, maybe this may sound like I'm dismissing the question, but like, don't be afraid to build your own custom block. You know, we know a lot of people like in different spaces that the core blocks don't work for them, you know, for their implementations. But because, you know, maybe a mega menu or something like that. Just you, there's no way to pigeonhole it into the core navigation block, but there's nothing stopping you from building your own. Um, and so, I, some I've tried to push people in that direction because sometimes you can do so much with a custom block, especially if it meets the needs of your organization, that a core block just will never be ever be able to do. Like a core block will only ever be able to do so much. Um, so yeah, I, building custom blocks isn't always an option. Uh, obviously, using core as much as you can is great, but sometimes it's just not going to work. Yeah. And I also would stress if you do build custom blocks, please share them, uh, if if possible, if it's within your, uh, you know, agency client contract or how you set that up, um, just for other people to use and for even inspiration for core. Um, I, I see so many uh, great implementations of things that people share with me that it's just hidden behind a private repository um, yeah. and not being shared with the community. And even if you can't share the whole thing, just like sometimes even just like the guidance on like how you would build the thing or, a, you know, a rough, very simplified rough, you know, outline of it is usually is sometimes enough. Um, so anything you can uh, would be awesome. More examples in the community, the better. So uh, uh, there's a lot of comments around reusable blocks. Um, I personally find reusable blocks and everything around that fairly confusing. But part of this whole pattern initiative, because what's going to happen with this these kind of pattern overhaul is a unification with, it's going to basically, be, the idea is that there's going to be one block, a fully synced pattern block is a reusable block. Then you have a partially synced, which hasn't been developed yet, and then a standard pattern like we have today. But it's all going to run off of one block. Um, and so a lot of the, hope, the, the hopeful goal is that a lot of the confusion and you know wonkiness of certain things will get at least get improved with this kind of grand unification. Um, but that's, that's kind of the, the big picture ideal. see yeah i'm scrolling back through chat to see if we missed anything I was... <clears throat> so let me see my poll here yeah, i think most people filled it out okay so for those that are not have not are not using or building block themes I'm sure there's many reasons, um, but what's the number one reason that you're not? Um, time in the day, you know, is a very valid answer. Um, but we're just, I'm just curious, like what, what's, what's preventing you from building it? Maybe it's time, maybe that's the, the biggest one, but we're just curious. I mean, building a block theme from scratch or using another block theme. Um, 
maybe I didn't phrase that poll correctly. Have you built a block theme or are you using block themes in your client builds or on your own personal site? Are you, I should have said, are you using block themes? I guess is what I should have said. Yeah. It could be time for a lot of people or for one thing, uh, I have a lot of extra time since I don't, I don't have to deal with clients uh, day to day. And like, I've been spending, you know, my evenings and, you know, on into the night here for the last couple of weeks, um, just like setting up a, like just a, kind of a base, uh, you know, boilerplate type theme. And, and I realized it's been a while, like probably two years since I built like a full fledged, like work, you know, block theme and a mm -hmm. lot of it. Um, and a lot of things have changed in that time. Um, so you're constantly having to relearn, I'm assuming for most people. Um, and you know, time is money, you know, you have to, you have to actually build, you know, out your client site. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, one of the things that we hear a lot is like, if you're building a lot of sites for clients, like having a really solid, like base for starter theme is kind of like key. We are running short on time, but do you want to just share kind of like the impetus behind your uh, starter theme that you built, uh, Justin? And yeah, I'm linking it in the uh, chat. Uh, I mean, I'll be I'll be happy to uh, share my screen. I mean, it's nothing. Uh, let's see where it is. It's nothing special. It's just a uh, boilerplate, right? So if I can get uh, all right. Can everybody see this fine? Yep. All right. All right. So, I mean, it's just a plain, uh, you know, black and white theme, nothing spectacular. Well, okay. That looks the first post I clicked on is obviously something, uh, you know, just base elements in, um, just like testing things. Uh, but uh, I have in, like the theme folder, there are all the base stuff you need, like settings and styles within a uh, theme JSON. Uh, it looks a bit heavy. Uh, I realized as I was doing this, there are still some, probably some bugs that need to be reported uh, after I get through with this process. Um, and they're also just open tickets um, that uh, many of them are in WordPress uh, on, on Slate for WordPress 6.3. Um, like for example, one of the, I'll go back, going back to the uh, first screenshot, like this, um, these are just like uh, six posts, three columns, and there's no way to remove the, the gaps between posts without custom CSS. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to write a custom block style, um, things like that. And so like, I'm trying to, with this starter theme, like handle like some of those edge cases uh, or not really edge cases, just, uh, you know, common <laughs> cases too, that WordPress doesn't quite support yet. Um, like what is the, uh, what is the name of the post -temp? Yeah, so it's kind of complicated. Like there's way too much custom CSS you have to write. <laughs> just to remove a gap, yeah. just to remove a gap. That's uh, so that needs to be, you know, handled in core ideally, but we're not there yet. Uh, hopefully 6.3, um, but there's uh, a lot of the theme is just like taking care of little problems like that. Uh, so you don't have to, uh, you know, if you're building it for a client, you don't have to worry about it because it's, it's fixed already. Um, and, but I wouldn't love for anybody who wants to, um, you know, if you want to fork it, build your own thing, it's like it's pretty minimal in many ways. Um, I'm to just stop sharing. And because I know I probably could do a few more minutes on, but I know we're short on time. Uh, and PRs are welcome. Uh, and uh, please, uh, you know, if you want, if you're, I know we had how many people we haven't who have who haven't built with uh, block themes yet? Was it? Um, like uh, twenty one percent of our people didn't hasn't haven't. Or, or have and then we have another twenty seven who have tried. And so about about yeah. fifty people have not 
fully done it. One thing I want to I want to spotlight on, on Justin's theme is that it does include some perhaps more advanced techniques, like it has per block uh, style sheets, which is really cool. Um, so it does some more like kind of basic functionality that really sets up for a really sophisticated theme, which is which is pretty cool. So yeah, um, yeah. One of my goals was to at least like show an example of each feature that you can possibly do with the theme, um, just so people have like the code there on hand, even if they need to rip it out later. Um, so uh, uh, more than a starter theme, I would almost I want to call it a learning theme, educational. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yep, so maybe we'll have time like to kind of walk through that like theme a bit more in like the you know next month's whole hangout. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, so I know we have uh, more questions that have already popped up in the chat. What do we see? Well, okay. So Mark's using uh, theme.json and PHP themes, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right. I, I do want to stress like hybrid themes are great. Like, you know, in many situations, especially if you're transitioning, like that's a great way of going about it. Um, I'd actually say when I first heard about the block editor, like the way it was kind of sold to me and some other theme authors at the time was were hybrid themes. That's that's the, what I had in mind. Um, I thought that was going to be the first thing we started doing with uh, we would have PHP templates, but we might have uh, you know, block template parts that we can just insert insert anywhere. And um, that's what sold me on the idea early on. And I know we didn't really get the, you know, block template parts within PHP, uh, PHP classic theme until last year, I think it was. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, that's a great way to build client sites to me. Um, just, you kind of control you, I feel like you have a lot more control from a, like if you're coming from a PHP development standpoint um, and you haven't really dove into uh, like full block theming yet. Yeah. I, I do want to touch on Michael's comment about how basically having more settings in theme.json or in global styles that you could then turn off um or like so your block editor is super basic but then you can control more things in global styles that's one of my personal things too so like with the filters that i showed you today you could turn off typography color border radius dimensions but then all the other settings that blocks have that aren't in theme.json you can't do anything with um so having like a unified way to kind of restrict other functionality of blocks uh, would be pretty interesting um, and would be really powerful and useful like in a client setting. Because maybe you, for example, like maybe cover blocks for, you know, should only ever have, you shouldn't be able to change the opacity on the overlay. Maybe it has to be 20% all the time. And, you know, you don't want people to mess with that. Like you, it's really hard to do um, currently. So things like that, or if there are ways to do it, it's our job, I guess, to, to to show you the, the community how to do it. Um, but it's those are the kind of things that I think people are looking for a lot with. OK, cool. So Michael, you, I, <laughs> OK, I'm glad that resonates with you because I think it's a, an area that would help a lot if that was possible. All right, so another question about to say or comment about disabling blocks. There was another, so there's another issue. Actually, I'm going to share two issues. So if you'd like to uh, share more comments after uh, the, the hallway hangout, I'm going to share two issues that there are many, but these are two that I think are pretty good that um, others have shared. And then there's some good conversation in the issues around ways of curating or you know mo modifying editor functionality 
uh, for the needs of you know different situations. So one of them relates to just governing block settings. And this the, the second issue is actually the genesis of the client side filter that I shared in the demo. And the first one is about the lack of configuration potentially endangering editorial workflows for those that build sites, you know, for clients that need that sort of thing. So some good comments in there, good discussion around curation and functionality that it will be needed um, for, for folks to really adopt block themes for clients. Um, but really any feedback, all the, all the chat today, we're going to be taking back any additional feedback that you have on this uh, will be fantastic. So. I also want to add that um, feel free to ping me or Nick, yeah. uh, you know, on Slack uh, at any point uh, or, you know, even with ideas, you want us to run hallway hangouts around. Um, so, cause I, I believe we're going to, uh, we're going to try to keep these pretty consistent, uh, more likely in the like mid middle of the month, but we're a little late this month. Um, yeah. And we also have, uh, our, our developer advocacy team also runs what are called developer hours. Uh, and so it's kind of a more developer focused event, usually like a, a workshop or a, or a panel discussion around more like developer heavy conversations. But that's another avenue where we can talk about some of this stuff. So um, between hallway hangouts and developer hours, hopefully we cover quite a bit. <laughs> um, but we're always looking for ideas from you folks in the community around what will be uh, the most useful. All right. Any more any more last minute questions? If not, we will start wrapping up here. We're just about out of time. All right. Well, thank you everybody for attending. Again, uh, my name is Nick Diego, joined by Justin Tadlock. We're both developer relations advocates sponsored by Automatic. And we hope to see you on the next hallway hangout. We will be putting them uh, on Meetup uh, moving forward. So again, thank you all for attending and I hope you have a great day. All right. Thanks, everyone.